Hi, Sabina Brennan here, host of the Superbrain podcast. I'm a psychologist and a neuroscientist, and I want to share with you some practical tips on how to manage stress in the face of this coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Now more than ever, you need a healthy immune system um, in order to fight the virus. And actually, even if you become infected with the virus, you'll need a healthy immune system to fight the infection. Unfortunately, stress suppresses your immune function. Now, it's perfectly normal at a time like this to feel stressed, but it is also absolutely critical that you manage that stress so that you can get your immune system in tip-top shape. So I'm gonna share 10 tips with you. Tip number one, pull back from social media. Only listen to information from trusted resources like the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, uh, your own government, uh, health departments, those kind of people. Follow their advice regarding hygiene, social distancing and social isolation. Investing too much time on social media, constantly reading about the virus, virus is going to ramp up your amygdala, which is your fear center. Consider actually blocking some of the hashtags. Uh, you can block any hashtags related to the coronavirus or COVID-19. Also consider muting friends or followers who are constantly and obsessively talking about the virus. You need to get your head into a calm space. You need to balance your time on social media with time spent in other activities not related to the virus or quarantine or isolation. Tip number two. Take news monitoring in shifts. Whilst it's really important to keep abreast of information from trusted resources, you don't need to be constantly checking for updates or listening for news on the hour every hour. Consider creating um, a group, set up a roster where you share news monitoring. For example, on Monday, John can actually check out uh, the news and monitor it during the day. And then he can t return to the group and tell you, give you an update when there is important information that has changed instructions. Um, this way you can get on with your everyday life without um, worrying that you're missing out on important information, but also just as importantly, without constantly um, being on, you know, assaulted with um, information, distressing information about the virus. So take a step back uh, from the news media. Be careful who you share, who you invite to be part of the group who will roster uh, and take turns. You want people who will be calm and who will report the news as is, not exaggerated, to ramp up your fears. Tip number three, have a laugh. I mean it. Stress suppresses your immune function. Boost yours by laughing. Laughter is actually nature's best stress buster. Being stressed can rob us of our sense of humor and make it difficult for us to see the funny side of life. Um, laughter actually reduces levels of the stress hormone cortisol. And in fact, often laughter gets us through the unthinkable. Think about any time you've ever been at a funeral. How much did you cry and how much did you laugh? It helps us get through the tough times. So what I would suggest here is, um, you know, laugh where you can. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to engage in other activities even in the face of this pandemic. So why don't you download a stash of funny movies or funny podcasts um, to have in store and ready to hand whenever you start to feel depressed or stressed or anxious. A good laugh will really restore um, your sense of humor. Tip number four, sleep. Sleep is more important than ever. You need sleep, good quality sleep for a healthy immune system. Also, if you do happen to become infected, and many of us will, you will need sleep to help you fight the infection. So don't skimp on sleep at this time. Also, don't fall into the habit because you're at home all the time of thinking that you can stay up late and sleep late uh, the next day. We're not on holiday. We're just adapting our lifestyles so that we can protect herd immunity. So stick to a regular bedtime as if you were getting up 
to go to school or to go to work. Really critical for your brain for you to go to bed at the same time every evening and get up at the same time every morning. Um, honestly, cherish sleep. It is absolutely vital at this time. Tip number five, get physical. Exercise is absolutely brilliant way to manage stress. Um, I personally, I use exercise to manage my mental health. Um, mental health issues aren't going to disappear or go away just because we're in the midst of a pandemic. In fact, actually, they're probably going to be um, harder to manage, um, especially with things like gyms being closed. So many people use physical exercise to manage stress. If you're one of those people, um, can I suggest that you keep exercising? Uh, if your country's regulations still allows, allow you to exercise, get out, get walking, get running. I know a lot of gyms are closed down, um, but use your balcony, use your garden, wherever you can to exercise. Um, be creative, um, look online. There's so many virtual classes. I know my gym even sent us a message that they're going to be sending us um, virtual classes that we can take at home. Uh, there's loads on YouTube, you'll find them everywhere. Get stuck in, get exercising. It releases endorphins, it will make you feel good, and it will also help you to manage stress. Tip number six, eat a healthy diet. Stress can lead to overeating and unhealthy food choices. Now, stress in the short term can suppress your appetite, but in the long term, when it's poorly managed and becomes chronic, um, it can really lead to overeating. The cortisol released um, in your bloodstream will lead you to overeat and also to crave sugary foods, etc. So avoid caffeine and um, sugars, foods with high sugar content because they ramp up your amygdala, which is your fear center in your brain. So you need to be calming down um, your amygdala. Um, I've seen a lot of people stocking up on dried food, preserved foods, um, foods with a lot of preservatives in them, um, and possibly food with high sugar content and, and high salt content. If you do want to plan ahead, I would suggest that you go and you buy healthy, fresh food, lots of vegetables, come home, batch make soups or one pot dishes and then you can store them in the freezer and then you know you have plenty of food there for you and you know that it's good wholesome food and I can guarantee you it is far tastier um, than any of the foods filled with preservatives far better for you too and will help you keep your immune system healthy tip number seven stay connected so, social distancing and self-isolation measures can lead to loneliness, but it doesn't have to be that way. Now more than ever, we have access to so many means to stay connected. Um, stay connected with your friends, with your families, with your, with your colleagues. Make a conscious effort to do so via Skype, via Zoom, via WhatsApp messaging, whatever means you use, stay connected. Just because you're at home or working from home doesn't mean that you can't stop for a few minutes and have that chat that you ordinarily would have had at the water cooler or wherever. Um, also, think about those people in your community who may not be as familiar with the technology that allows us to communicate that way. Um, consider offering to telephone them for a chat. Um, so that they don't feel um, incredibly lonely and isolated. Loneliness is as bad for your health um, and mental well-being as obesity and smoking. So um, it really is critical to stay connected. Um, just make sure you follow your guidelines with regard to social distancing and self-isolation. Tip number eight, be aware of negativity bias. Your brain has a natural tendency to pay special attention to the negative. As a result, it's very easy to put the blinkers on and focus only on the coronavirus. Um, and when you do so, you miss lots of good um, things going on around you. So take those blinkers off. Uh, you'll need about five positives to counteract every negative. So um, look around you, look for those positives in your life. It could be something as sim simple as looking out your garden and seeing a daffodil come into flower or uh, finding a great podcast to listen to. Um, whatever it is, make a conscious effort to focus on the positive so that you can counteract those negatives and keep your mood um, elevated 
and minimize your stress. Tip number nine, get smart and avoid boredom. Um, you know, if we're going to be self-isolating or even in quarantine, um, that can lead to boredom, which in turn can lead to depression and actually anxiety. Um, and we don't want that. We want to manage anxiety and manage stress. So keep yourself busy. Uh, if you're not working from home, actively seek out things to keep you busy. Focusing on what you're doing while you're doing it um, is a great antidote to stress. Um, have a think about your childhood dreams or revisit your bucket list. Are there things that you, on that list, that you could actually start to do now, now that you have time? Um, have a look at it, consider it. Consider taking an online course. Um, there's, ma I don't know if you've heard of the massive open online courses. They're free. Um, I'm even an educator on one of them on FutureLearn. Um, basically, you can learn anything that you want on these courses. They're free. They also have a social element, so you can interact uh, with other people taking the course the same time as you, virtually online. Now, I'm looking at a list here of some of the things that you can study. Uh, languages, literature, politics, business, culture, science, psychology, nature, history, creative arts, tech, coding, movie making. I mean, the list is endless. Have a look, check it out. There's bound to be something that grabs your interest. Your brain thrives on challenge. So stimulate your brain every day. That'll help keep the boredom at bay and it will also help to keep your brain healthy. So start small, just set yourself little challenges, you know, whatever. Decide that you're going to learn that speech that you love or that song that you love, the lyrics to it, anything, small little things, just to keep your brain challenged and occupied. Number 10, my final tip uh, to manage stress in the face of the coronavirus is to smile more. Uh, smiling is another natural stress buster. It's also absolutely brilliant for your brain. It encourages the growth of new brain cells. It also releases endorphins that make you feel good. In addition, it lowers your blood pressure and it boosts your immune function. So I prescribe smiling five times a day. Once first thing in the morning, because it is a fantastic way to start the day. Once last thing at night, because it's a brilliant way to end the day on a positive note. I would ask that you share at least one of your smiles with somebody else. Um, you can smile at a distance um, from people. Uh, we can't shake hands or hug anymore, so why not share a smile? And I also like actually to adopt the Japanese bow. Um, I think it feels very respectful and accompanied with a smile. Um, it's beneficial to your health. Um, if you are completely um, uh, locked down in isolation, um, I would suggest that you smile with people virtually. Get onto Skype, get on, onto Facebook video, get onto Instagram, smile, smile, smile wherever you can. So that's three smiles. The other two smiles, you can use them whatever way you want. I'm going to leave you with a quote from William James, the founding father of psychology. He says that our biggest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. I'm in total agreement. Um, the choice is yours. Think positive. Stay safe. Stay well. We're all humans. We're all in this together.